Are the painkillers sitting in your cabinet quietly sabotaging your kidneys without you feeling a single twinge? Many listeners are surprised to learn that ordinary drugs, NSAIDs, antibiotics, acid blockers, laxatives, and even imaging dyes now rank among the most common yet least recognized causes of kidney injury. Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and in the next few minutes, you'll discover which medications strain your kidneys, why damage surface is late, and the exact steps you can take to stay protected. You rely on your kidneys to filter about 45 gallons of blood each day, regulate fluid balance, control blood pressure, and support red blood cell production. The problem is that every pill you swallow passes through those same filters, adding work that accumulates year after year, especially if you're older, dehydrated, or juggling several prescriptions. The pain reliever category is the first trouble spot. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, naproxen, and similar options, block an enzyme that normally keeps kidney blood vessels open. When those vessels constrict, filtration declines. Using NSAIDs for more than 10 days for pain, or more than 3 for fever, sharply raises the risk, and the danger multiplies if you combine an NSAID with an ACE inhibitor and a diuretic, the well-named triple whammy. Basic lab tests for filtration rate and protein leakage can catch the slide early. Even brief courses of antibiotics can do harm. Drugs such as tobramycin accumulate inside kidney cells and physically damage their structure, while sulfonamides crystallize in urine, blocking tiny tubes and driving inflammation. If kidney function is already reduced and the dose isn't adjusted, common agents like amoxicillin and ciprofloxacin build up, sometimes triggering an allergic reaction that swells kidney tissue. Antivirals and immunosuppressants add another layer of stress. Tenofovir, widely used for HIV and cyclosporin, critical for transplant recipients, choke blood flow in the kidneys and injure the same cells tasked with removing waste. Because these therapies often appear in complex regimens, routine kidney labs become essential. Acid blockers look innocent but aren't. Proton pump inhibitors, omeprazole, esomeprazole, lansoprazole, are linked to chronic kidney disease through an immune reaction called interstitial nephritis. Fatigue, ankle swelling, or darker urine are the subtle clues. Many people stay on PPIs for years, even though their original heartburn has resolved. If you need ongoing relief, taper slowly and discuss switching to famotidine, which controls acid without the same kidney burden. Constipation remedies can also backfire. Stimulant laxatives such as Senna and osmotic types like polyethylene glycol draw water into the gut or speed transit. When fluid intake doesn't keep up, blood supply to the kidneys drops, setting the stage for stones made of concentrated minerals like calcium and oxalate. Frequent laxative use is common among older adults, yet safer options, more water, daily movement, and fiber-rich fruits and vegetables often restore regularity naturally. Imaging dyes deserve respect, too. Iodine-based contrast used in CT scans can trigger contrast-induced nephropathy, a sharp decline in kidney function within 48 hours, especially in people with diabetes, heart disease, or mild pre-existing kidney loss. Gadolinium-based dyes used for MRI carry a different risk, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, a condition that thickens skin and connective tissue but only in those with severely impaired kidneys. Proper hydration and clear communication with your medical team are your best safeguards. So, how do you protect yourself? First, revisit the original reason for every prescription. Was that NSAID meant only for post-surgery pain? Was that PPI started for a temporary bout of reflux? If the root cause is gone, the drug may be doing more harm than good. Second, watch for early warning signs. Persistent fatigue fluid retention in your ankles or face, changes in urination frequency or color, lower back discomfort, or unexplained brain fog. These cues often appear long before standard blood work turns abnormal. Third, support the systems that reduce drug dependence, a nutrient-dense diet, avoidance of seed oils that disrupt metabolism, 
and strategies that improve mitochondrial function, lower inflammation, and lessen the perceived need for symptom-covering medications. Fourth, when pain strikes, reach for topical magnesium, curcumin-rich turmeric, or gentle movement before defaulting to an NSAID. If heartburn flares, try digestive bitters before meals to nudge your stomach toward healthy acid production instead of reflexively reaching for a PPI. Finally, set a reminder every six months to conduct a medication review with your physician. Ask one pointed question. Is this fixing the problem or just masking it? That single conversation can spare your kidneys years of unnecessary strain. Your practical challenge this week is simple. List every drug or over-the-counter remedy you take. Note why you started it. And schedule that six-month review. Knowledge plus timely action is your strongest defense. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.